Hi, my name is Todd Austin. I'm from Verdon, Illinois. I've been a member of Bat Conservation International for 19 years. What I'm going to demonstrate in this video is if you would happen to find a bat in your house, such as on the wall, like so, I'm going to show you how to safely get that bat out of the house without hurting the bat and without hurting any people as well. Now obviously if you are too afraid to do that yourself then you should call a bat rescuer. If you go to www.basicallybats.org it's a worldwide database of all the bat rescuers in the entire world. So first of all you can see I have long sleeves on and I have leather or deerskin gloves on. One should never attempt to handle a bat without such things and obviously you want to have long pants, socks and shoes as well. Now since this bat's high up I'm going to have to stand on the step stool. I'm going to take a coffee can, it can be metal or it can be the plastic kind. I'm going to put it over the bat. It's the first step. Now I'm going to take a piece of cardboard, a thick piece of cardboard. I'm going to slide it up under. Okay, and we've got the bat in here like so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bat outside. We're going to set the coffee can somewhere where it's at least three feet off the ground. Because when the bat flies out, if, if you have the bat at ground level, it's not going to have any lift to get up in the air. Because it has to drop down a little when it flies out. So we want to have it at least three or four feet off the ground. We want to have it anchored so the can doesn't roll away, which I've done here. And then I'm just going to take this off, and of course the bat now is free to fly out whenever it wants to. It may be in the next few seconds, the bat may sit there for an hour or two before it flies out, so it really depends. But bottom line is the bat is now safe, the people are now safe, no physical contact has been established, meaning this bat does not need to be submitted to a state and tested for diseases. By doing this, we have essentially rescued a bat. Now, if this were to happen during the middle of winter, such as during a blizzard in January, for example, we would not perform this technique because the bat really should be in hibernation. And here we see the bat thinking about coming out. So if it was in the middle of winter, you would really need to call a bat rescuer or a bat rehabilitator, and then they would have to overwinter the bat, which means it would put an end to its hibernation, they would speed up its metabolism, get it through to the spring, and then they would release it back into the wild. So that's what overwintering is. And I would like to thank Trouble, the big brown bat here, for being my co-star <laughs> in this YouTube video about how to safely get a bat out of your home.